So you may be wondering what's been happening with that Trump media stock, right? It was crashing and crashing, and while it's still down more than 50% of its value, as it was really heading for the gutter, something happened where it seemed to just tick up just a little bit, kind of hover in the 30s, and a lot of people may be confused what is going on. Let me give you my opinion, let me be clear, this is simply my opinion, but there's a reason why DJT, the Trump media stock, went down another 8%, and again, I'm just gonna give you my opinion of what I think was going down. So. If Donald Trump's stock remained above $17.50 for a given period of time, 20 days in a 30-day uh, trading period, Donald Trump would earn out, it's called an earn out, of 30 plus million more shares would be issued. That would dilute existing shareholders, but in theory make Donald Trump richer, on paper at least, with additional Trump Media DJT stock. Now, that would still be subject to the lockout that Donald Trump is under. So Donald Trump and other insiders were incentivized, in my opinion, to keep that stock above 1750, and it seemed to be heading down. So we noticed a few things were happening to try to, in my opinion, keep that above 1750 for the time being. Again, and this is my opinion, screw over retail investors by giving them hope that the stock may rebound, which we all have talked about, and again, in my opinion, the financials simply don't make sense for the stock to, frankly, anywhere be above a dollar or two dollars, and it's probably a penny stock, if anything. And again, let me be clear, this is my opinion, I'm not giving you stock advice. I want to make that very, very clear. So what did we notice happening? Well, number one, the borrowing fees for those who wanted to short the stock started going up, making it harder to short the stock. We noticed that. Another thing happened on the Trump media website, the investor website. They were aggressively giving retail investors guidance on how to block their brokers from allowing people to borrow the shares to short sell. We noticed that that was happening. And then one of the other things that we saw happening as well was uh, the CEO of Trump Media, Devin Nunes, went on an aggressive public relations tour on right-wing media to try to uh, attack short sellers, to go after groups like Ken Griffin's uh, Citadel Securities, and then they got into a battle back and forth, and to try to tell all of the Trump media retail investors, look, this company is strong, it's doing well, look at all of the lines of business that we are expanding to, we're gonna bring all of these great features and we're gonna merge Facebook and Instagram and TikTok all in one and make the greatest company you've ever seen. And again, I think that's very problematic language from a false and misleading securities litigation uh, standpoint. So all of those things were happening. And I think the uh, confluence of those factors kept the shares hovering. Uh, it stopped its death spiral that it was on. It temporarily rebounded. And Donald Trump, it seems, did earn out uh, those additional shares. It's still locked up. But I think the market now has to grapple with the fact that the retail investors are further diluted. So in my opinion, the retail investors are the one who's getting screwed here when the valuation of this company is far in excess of anything that it should be. Here, for example, is what CNBC reported um, yesterday. It said DJT stock plunges 8% as Trump qualifies for 36 million bonus shares. Trump media shares fell 8% ahead of an expected earnout bonus. For Donald Trump, Trump will receive an additional 36 million shares worth about 
1.15 billion if the stock closes above that $17.50 minimum share price and Donald Trump's stake in the company will be worth about $3.7 billion with the earnout bonus giving him an earnout bonus for the share staying above $17.50 and in my opinion artificially staying above it talked about how Trump shares fell 8% on Tuesday as Trump is expected to have this earnout bonus I do want to remind you though that they're still subject to the lockup for now DJT closed at $32.57 that's 50% below the opening price last month that gives Trump an additional 36 million shares worth $1.15 billion, and that dilutes existing shareholders. The earnout was contingent on the stock reaching the benchmark for 20 trading days within a 30 day trading period. Trump, the majority shareholder in DJT, already owns 78.75 million shares. His stake in the company now will be worth significantly more. So then we saw this fight between Devin Nunes, the CEO of Trump Media, former MAGA Republican Congress member, and Citadel CEO Ken Griffin. And Ken Griffin called Trump Media CEO Devin Nunes a loser after Griffin wrote a letter to NASDAQ claiming to be a victim, because with Trump and Trump Media and those in the MAGA inner circle, it's always them being a victim. That, that Trump media, DJT, is the victim of potential market manipulation, and that's why the stock is going down, and we need your help, NASDAQ. And then Devin Nunes went on a tour on right-wing media to go and further that message. It talks about in this article how Citadel Securities has blasted the CEO of Trump Media, the parent company of Truth Social, after the executive accused Ken Griffin's company, Citadel, of potential market manipulation, Miami-based Citadel Securities, where Griffin sits as the founder and non-executive chairman, was named among the group allegedly engaged in the short selling, but a spokesman for the capital markets firm resoundingly denied the allegations, saying Nunes is merely using this as an excuse for the dismal market performance of the stock. Citadel Securities chief uh, called Nunes a proverbial loser and then said Nunes is exactly the type of person Donald Trump would have fired on The Apprentice. The uh, behemoth added that if Nunes were on its payroll, it would fire him because ability and integrity are at the center of everything we do. Notably, Trump media did not respond to Fortune for comment. The one thing I'll disagree with Kevin Griffin over here, or Ken Griffin rather, over here, is that um, Nunes is exactly the type of person Donald Trump would hire, not fire. Donald Trump hires losers. Donald Trump hires people who he thinks he can control. Donald Trump is a uh, perennial loser and you go back to all of his companies most of donald trump's companies went bankrupt you go even look at the initial uh documents about bringing trump media public and it goes through all of trump's bankruptcies over the years take a look at this bankruptcy 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 his whole career is bankruptcy so you know when you have someone like a ken griffin you know you know, attack Nunes and go, but Trump would hire better people. No, this is exactly the way Trump runs things, like an absolute loser. There's a reason Trump's bankrupted all these things in the past that Trump had to disclose on his SEC filings. Here's the video right here of Trump Media CEO Devin Nunes saying he has hundreds of thousands of smaller MAGA investors in Trump Media, and they are calling him, asking him why the stock is tanking. So he filed a complaint with the SEC saying that President Biden and other Wall Street bankers are conspiring against them. Here, play this clip. Look, we're here to defend our retail shareholders. Like, I don't give a damn if Wall Street doesn't want to support us. In fact, we welcome it. But we have millions of retail shareholders, or we have millions of, of people around the globe, or in the United States. We have hundreds of thousands of retail shareholders. We don't have any institutions, zero, zero Wall Street money. That's okay. But when you see irregular behavior occurring where it looks like our retail shareholders could be taken advantage of, 
which is what many of our shareholders believe. And if they call me or they contact us, we have a responsibility to reach out to the to the NASDAQ to say, hey, we're seeing this, we're gonna to get to the bottom of it if there is. If there's not, the obvious response, if you think there's nothing wrong, you say there's nothing wrong. You don't go out and, and basically attack me personally. You basically just say, hey, there's nothing wrong, we'll, we'll love to work with you, and that's how it should be done. So since they're making the personal attacks, uh, if we continue to show up on these lists and it appears like there's unusual activity, you can be damn sure that this investigation will continue. And that'll include if we have to go to the Congress, if we have to take legal action, we will do whatever it takes to defend our retail investors. And what's at the heart of all of this, Chris? Remember at the beginning of the week, Joe Biden mentions True Social and our stock price. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. That happened at the I, beginning of I, the week? I saw that. Now here's Trump Media CEO Devin Nunes saying that he has experience from his days in Congress doing investigations. So he's going to find out the nefarious actors that are causing the stock to plummet. Play this clip. You know, I spent my uh, career in Washington doing some of the most complicated investigations uh, that, uh, that there's ever been in Washington, some of the biggest scandals right. that there were. And so if people are screwing with this stock, we're not playing games with them. We're going to find out because, you know, we know that with our retail shareholder base, we're not, you know, we're not stupid here. We know that all the big banks in this country uh, are not going to recommend our stock. They're not going to put it into their fund. So we're relying on retail investors to invest in the stock. That's OK. That's not a problem. But if the big banks and the trading companies don't actually have the shares to short, that's a big problem. So if yeah. they think they're going to screw with us and they think we're not going to figure out, I you know, figure it out. I got I got news for them. We're going to come after them. And, Amen. Uh, that's, that's what... And here's Devin Nunes hyping the stock and saying, "Here's what we're going to do. Here's all of the great things we're trying to build here." Play this clip. It's a uh, it's big news, especially for Real America's Voice, as you probably know. You've participated as we've been as we've been testing this. And so this will be the first app, as you know, with True Social, we're the beachhead against big tech. Uh, we're trying to take the best of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, uh, TikTok, put it into one app. Well, we're now going to have the ability for canceled TV programs or and or maybe not canceled, but maybe not allowed on all the platforms. You'll be able to actually watch television within True Social. So that's the first, that's what we've been to. So you can hear it for yourself there. Again, I want to be clear. This is all my opinion. I'm not giving stock advice, but if you wanted to know why the stock went down 8% on Tuesday, why it was going up the way it was when it was, why it's been fluctuating, you know, why it seemed to be in a death spiral, but went up a little bit. I mean, I think it's, it's clear in my opinion, at least, that the earnout was one of the major factors there. And you see for yourself what's happening. And ultimately what this is going to result in is retail investors are going to get screwed. At some time, the bottom is going to fall. Could that be before, right before the lockup period where Donald Trump's about to sell? The moment Donald Trump tries to liquidate his shares and sell the shares himself, at one point will the bottom fall? But you could go back, well, watch this video. I've been talking about this for two years now, giving you my opinion. The bottom will fall, in my opinion, at some point. People are going to get seriously harmed. They already are. Um, and it's just a matter of time, and it's very unfortunate. And um, those who are aware of the market and have knowledge of these things know that where a company is losing $58 million on a $4 million in revenue with $58 million loss, with $1.2 million in the fourth quarter of 2023, it, that doesn't justify a valuation of more than usually $10 million, $20 million, maybe at most. And if you want to talk about over 100 million outstanding shares at a 20 million valuation, it would be a fraction of a dollar per share if you were just to do the basic math there, not where it's trading right now. Again, all my opinion, 
all my opinion. I'm not giving you any stock advice. So take my opinion for what it's worth. You could disagree with it. We're all entitled to our opinions, but that's uh, my analysis. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers thanks to your support.